So far in the 2024 trade period, there have been no major shocks in terms of player movement. All is on schedule in terms of the players being discussed, and besides Clayton Oliver, no one has come out of the blue and been traded or requested one. It's a far cry from previous trade periods, both modern day and in the past, that have been filled with fascinating and out of nowhere player moves. The word shock would have been an understatement for Hawthorne fans at the end of the 2016 trade period. The Hawks had just lost in straight sets in finals, but came off another top four finish in 2016, three straight grand final wins before that, and four straight grand final appearances dating back to 2012. Early on in that off season, it broke that club legend Sam Mitchell was open to a trade to the West Coast Eagles. Now it was well known inside Hawthorne and league wide that Mitchell wanted to venture into coaching after his playing days. At the end of the 2016 season, Mitchell was 34, but still averaged 29.6 disposals per game, polled 16 Brownlow votes, and won Hawthorne's best and fairest. It seemed like he was far from finished on the field. So not only was his departure a shock at first, but the trade itself had some scratching their heads. Mitchell, pick 54 and 72, were traded to West Coast for picks 52, 70 and 88. Basically, he went to the Eagles for nothing. After the move went through, Mitchell sent a letter to Hawthorne fans. He said, For most of you, the news on Wednesday would have come as a shock, but hopefully you can understand the logic of this decision. At 34, with a young family and perhaps my best footy behind me, this all makes sense and it opens doors in terms of my next dream to be a coach. Some of you will be angry and think the club and I have made a big mistake which I understand, but emotion aside, this is the right decision for myself and the football club. A couple years later, Mitchell revealed that the trade idea was brought to him by Alistair Clarkson on Brownlow Day 2016. Clarkson knew he was going to go to West Coast to coach eventually and gave Mitchell the option to leave early. In his autobiography called Relentless, Mitchell noted during a gathering at his house, Clarko said, I know your plan was to go to West Coast as an assistant coach when your career is over, but would you have any interest in going there and playing first? People love the conspiracy theories, but I'm sure if I had said to him, I'm not interested Clarko, that would have been the end of it. But that wasn't the only shock move in that trade period from Hawthorne. A week later, Premiership teammate Jordan Lewis would be moved on to Melbourne. It came about despite at the time list manager Graham Wright declaring Lewis would not be traded. He was only 30, four years younger than Mitchell, and coming off a great season averaging a touch over 26 disposals per game and coming second to Mitchell in Hawthorne's best and fairest. He was traded to Melbourne along with picks 57 and 68 and Hawthorne got back picks 44 and 66. Again, he basically went for scrap pick swaps. But there was a reason for both departures. They were over 30, took up salary cap space and allowed Hawthorne to pursue Tom Mitchell and Jaeger O'Meara in the same trade period. It was an instant changing of the guard and one we rarely see in today's game. The story out of the 2020 trade period was Collingwood's mismanagement of their cap and following salary dump including Tom Phillips, Jaden Stevenson and Adam Trelaw. Since leaving GWS for Collingwood, Trelaw had been ultra consistent and loved the football club, but it took a nasty turn in the end. Not only was the salary of Trelaw an issue for Collingwood, but personal reasons as well. Collingwood were concerned about how he would perform as his partner was about to move to Queensland and play professional netball. Trelaw was also told to his face by then coach Nathan Buckley that senior Collingwood players did not want him at the club. But by the final day of the trade period, Trelaw had still not found a new home. With only seconds left, a deal with the Western Bulldogs was struck. The Bulldogs sent pick 14 and a future second round pick in exchange for Trelaw, 
picks 26, 33, and 42 to help them match a bid for Jamara Eugle Hagen. The landing spot for Trelaw was a surprise, and it was a big win for the Dogs, especially when you factor in that the Magpies would pay 1.5 million of his remaining five year contract. In 2021, Collingwood would end up finishing second last, Buckley would leave as senior coach, while the Bulldogs, with the help of Trelaw, were able to reach that season's grand final. Perhaps the biggest bombshell trade in football history happened early in 1965. Ron Barassi was the Melbourne Football Club. By the end of 1964, of another Demons Premiership, Barassi was a six-time Premiership player, two-time Best and Ferris winner, and the biggest name in the VFL. The then 28-year-old wanted a new challenge after dominating with Melbourne, but was still unsure. In a Herald Sun article looking back at the switch, it notes, Even after agreeing to take on the Blues job, Barassi's emotions got the better of him, and at one stage, he told the Blues he would have to stay loyal to Melbourne. But as some people close to Barassi told him, if he proved a success with Melbourne, it would always be seen as an extension of Norm Smith's success. By doing it on his own at Carlton, it would be his achievement alone. Carlton agreed to pay Barassi £9,000 over three years, as well as give him a £10,000 loan. Melbourne eventually agreed to give a clearance, only wanting an apology from Carlton for initiating discussion with Barassi without their permission. An extract from the Herald Sun article reads, But the football Richter scale was more than just rocked. Kids openly cried, wondering what they would do with their Melbourne number 31 jumpers. Grown men held back tears in an effort to console their sons, and a poor Melbourne supporter from Lilydale was at a loss to know what to do with the parrot she had spent months teaching to say, come on Ron, come on Ron. It goes to show the magnitude of the move. Barassi would become a player coach at Carlton, leading them to the 1968 and 1970 VFL Premierships before having more success at North Melbourne. The mess at North Melbourne between Wayne Carey and Anthony Stevens is one of the saddest periods in the club's history. It set the team back years and ruined the reputation of Carey off the field and split people apart. One of the power teams in the mid to late 90s would struggle in the 2000s and the incident is a key reason why. Carey was at fault and the aftermath of the period of time led to him missing the entire 2002 AFL season. It became clear he could not go back to the Kangaroos in which Carey announced in a press conference. In 2001, where he played 14 games, he kicked 35 goals, a good return, but again, he had been out of the AFL for an entire year and would turn 32 in May. It was unclear if Carey would even get another chance to play again but the Adelaide Crows came calling. Because Carey was still under contract at North Melbourne, the Crows had to hand over picks 2 and 18 in the 2002 National Draft. The press conference was huge and made it clear Carey was not playing for big money and that Adelaide still believed he was at his best. Pick 2 ended up being Daniel Wells who played 258 games for North Melbourne and pick 18 was Chris Shaw who didn't play an AFL game. In total, Carey managed just 28 games in his two seasons at Adelaide, kicking 58 goals and having to retire due to a neck injury.